From this point onwards, a laser cutting design will never be the same again because I can create anything I want inside of Blender, export a laser cutting ready file straight from it and put that right onto my laser cutter and create some incredible results. Now, all of this is possible thanks to a nice little update to outline to SVG. But just before I get in and explain everything here, a small portion of this video is sponsored by Thangs. So let's start from the start. What exactly is outline to SVG? Outline to SVG is a free add-on for Blender and Blender is a 3D editing program and the add-on Outline to SVG lets you export the outline of any mesh object as a scale accurate precise SVG and it's had a small update that includes grouping and perspective exports and this means that you can do grouping by material, by collections, by internal shapes, you can create random colors to go with all the groupings. It truly lets me now use use Blender as my exclusive laser cutting design tool that I now no longer use Illustrator or Inkscape or any other vector editing program at all. And this is so incredibly powerful because over the last few years, if you haven't seen it online, Blender has been exploding and it can create some incredible shapes. Just look at all of this here. All of this you could literally use the outline of those shapes to create some incredible things for laser cutting or graphic design. And in fact, in this video, I created a little one. It's called Shape Muse. And all of these coasters here, along with these earrings, were generated in about 10 minutes to get this all ready for laser cutting. In fact, I cut these out just under an hour ago. So let's jump into Blender and I'll show you all of the new out dates to outline to SVG and I'll give you a small little tour of shape news if you want to find out more about that it's linked down in the description. Now I understand that probably some of you have never used Blender before just be aware I have an entire free course here on YouTube that teaches you how to use Blender and how to understand it or you can go over to my paid course that teaches you Blender as you actually create things. All right. That's enough said, let's dive straight into this. Starting it all off, this is how to get a hold of Outline to SVG. Go down into the description, there's a link there and it will take you to this Gumroad page. Here you can put in a zero or five. I would love it if you'd consider supporting the project because it means that I can further develop it or develop other add-ons that can really help us along here. Once you've downloaded it, you're gonna have a little zip file that you are going to use to install it. Go over to Edit, then Preferences, Go to add-ons, click install, and that entire zip file, that is what you want to install in. And then make sure that you go to outline here, outline to SVG, make sure that's turned on. I would also recommend restarting Blender because it can make things go a little bit weird. And then here on the right-hand side, you'll have outline to SVG, and these are all the new settings. Editing me here, there is also one more thing that I forgot to let you know. You've got to make sure you set up your Blender for precision modeling. I have an entire video of that. It's in the card or down in the description, but in a nutshell, make sure your unit scale of your world properties is set to 0.001 because this is what lets us get absolute accurate millimeter precision when we're exporting SVGs. So from here, very quickly, I'm gonna show you Shape Muse and just be aware that you can use this for 3D printing as well. And if you're wanting to really learn Shape Muse in a lot more in depth, the link is down in the description. From when this video came out, it's gonna be one week from here, but the add-on is already available, again, linked down in the description. So let's jump straight into that. Once you have Shape Muse installed, you're just gonna go over to the Shape Muse tab, make sure you have a mesh object selected. We're gonna click Add Shape Muse. I'm gonna press seven on my numpad to go up to the top. We're just gonna create something very quickly, just maybe one single coaster here, just to show you what can go on here. I'm gonna go over to the Modifiers tab because here are all the settings for it. And just so that it's nice and visible for you, I'm gonna go all the way down and turn on the mesh. So there you go. Now you can see that it's quickly meshed it all up. So here we have one Voronoi pattern there. Let's say I don't like that pattern. I can go to the Voronoi seed and I can change that up. Maybe I want this to be a denser Voronoi, but then I've got to go 
over here to the exclusion size and make that lower so I can make it even more Voronoi Yi. And then let's carry on. Let's maybe change the resolution here. Let's whack that all the way down. So if you want it to be in this way, or you can just turn on sharp in this direction as well. And if you're wanting more of an edge on the outside, you can just go over to, where is it here, the shape properties, and if there's an offset scale, or if I undo that in the Voronoi properties as well, there is a scale option to take it in. Just be aware that then affects the actual, um, here it is, the size exclusion. You're going to have to turn that back up. And then there's so many settings in here. So that's just the Voronoi styling. There's also another style, which is the shape generation pattern style. So we're going to change that over here. We have that already set. I'm not going to go into too much more detail. Just know that down here is the honeycomb style. We can change all of this, change the generation, change the probability of all of that. And there's six other shapes. So right here, we can just click through all the other shapes to put them in. And number six, right here, you can put in your own custom curve. And that is how I've created some of my own coasters using the Maker Tales logo. So speaking of which, let's head over to that file where I've already created a whole bunch of things. And here we are in the file that I've prepared earlier. As you see, I have a whole bunch of coasters here as well as a whole bunch of jewelry that you've seen. And there's also this extra little shape here that was created with Shape Muse as well. Just wanted to show you all the things that are possible. So let's get into all of the new updates of Outline to SVG. The first easiest one to show you is just, I can go into any view right here. I'm going to pick a save location. And then once I've named what I'm going to call the file and the location that it's going to go to, I'm just going to select everything I want to export. Now, this is pretty important. So right here, these are bool objects. So they're cutting away objects. Again, if you're wanting to learn all of this and how I've created these, it's going to be linked down in the description. But we need to select everything we want to export. Now here, this is just a guide for my laser cutter. So I'm just going to hide that. I don't actually need the cutting objects. So I'm just going to press H to hide all of those. And then if I select all of these, this is going to work just fine. I'm just going to make sure that I have an active object there. So I shift clicked on one to turn that into an active object by having that one yellow, then I'll hit export SVG. And this here is the type of result we're going to get. As you see, we now have a perspective export. Okay, now let's talk about grouping, because that just came out as one gigantic SVG. And that's not exactly what we're wanting here. We're wanting to be able to create a laser ready file. So I'm going to take it from the top down. So I'll press seven on my numpad. I have a camera here at the moment. Remember that if you have a camera in the scene, it is going to export through that camera when you're looking through that camera. So this here is currently set up as my laser cutting bed template. But for now, I'm going to now just click this and delete it away. I don't want to have to worry about it. So I'm going to press seven, go from the top down, and let's create some groups. The first and simplest type of grouping is collections. So I'm just going to select all of these three here, I'm going to press M to create a new collection, I'm going to create this new collection, I'm going to call this collection hex, I'll click OK. And you'll see here underneath my head, boop, we now have hex and it's got well, it's got those hex shapes. We're going to do the same for the maker tails ones. So press M, hit new collection, I'm going to call this MT. And then we've got another one for these three here, I'm going to hit M new collection, I'm going to call this VOR. And then I'm going to do one more for all of this jewelry here, I'll select all of those. Uh, make sure one of those there and press M and there and I'm going to call this jewelry. And now that I have all of that set, I'm not changing any thing else apart from collection. So I'm going to change the name here over to collection. And now that I have that, I'm going to select all of these here again, making sure that I have an active object in that selection, I'm going to export that SVG. And then let's take a look at what exactly has come out here, because we need to move things around so you can see the grouping styles. So here we are inside of Illustrator, and you might be going, hold on, this is all black. Exactly. It is 
all black, but they're grouped here. So you can do just single color grouping here. So it's completely up to you. If your laser works through SVG grouping or color grouping, it can be done. So this here is using just solid color. How about if I go back into Blender here and I'm gonna change this by just clicking one thing, which is the unique color. So I'm just gonna add at the end of here, colors and then let's go and export that SVG. Again, I have these all selected and now let's go and show you how this result came out. And this here is the unique color export. As you can see, every single one is its own unique color, each group here. But when it comes to laser cutting, it's usually best practice to cut the internal shapes first before the external shapes because Sometimes you never know, things can just go completely awry, especially when you're working with really light materials and the inside bits then go over other cuts that you're wanting to do later on. So how about we deal with that? And also keep in mind that sometimes you want to do engravings, which we're gonna cover that in just a moment as well. So let's do this whole internal hole separation, which is as simple as it sounds. You just turn on holes as a group. There is an exception here. That's part of the engraving and we'll get to that in just a moment. But I'm just going to add now colors and holes to this. We'll do that export once again and let me show you how it's come out just a little bit differently, but how those unique colors are still in play here. And here we have it this time round, you'll see that it's quite hard to make it out. It's because it tries to pick the same colors-ish of the internal holes of the actual out external outline as well. So everything has been grouped out perfectly. This is now all ready to go. Now there's only one other thing to show you, which is the materials. Now I'm just gonna show you how to create materials and how to do a grouping out because it is the exact same thing. The only difference is collections are grouping through collections and the other one is grouping through materials. You get the exact same results here. It does mean that I could have all of these top ones grouped out as a material. So then whenever I click collections, I'll get this type of export out. And then whenever I click materials, I'll get a different type of export out. And I'll show you that right now. Back in Blender, let's make sure that we select a mesh that we wanna color. Then I'm gonna change the material here. I'm gonna change this one to a green material that I've already created. And I'm also gonna select all of these ones right here. I'm gonna press Control L to link all of those materials. So those are all green as well. Then I'm gonna grab this one here to create a new color, just click new. So we're gonna go with green, let's go for a blue as well. So I'm gonna select those and that one last, control L, then we're gonna link those material. And then, so we've got green, blue, let's go for a yellow, no, let's go for a pink. There we go, so we'll go for a pink somewhere around there. Grab this, grab all of these and select this one as well. Then we're gonna press Control L once again and do that link color. So we're gonna take a look from here at the top down, make sure seven, select all of these. And the only thing we're gonna be doing differently is changing this from collections over to material. Gonna export that out and let me just make sure that this one here says material. So material and then we'll export that out and this here are the results very similar to the collections but have you noticed something it tries to match the color of the material that you put in so if you are actually doing graphic designs it'll hopefully help just a little bit because then at least it gets you in the same color palette to go and then do the work from there. Okay, now that we've covered grouping really well here, let's go and cover that exception for holes. Because obviously, if you have, for instance, the letter or the word hello, there's an O in there. If you did the internal hole grouping, then that O is cut out separately. And what happens if you wanted that to be an engraving? You need that to all be in one SVG group. Here's how we deal with that. Now I have created a new Blender file here because I want to show you today's sponsor, which is Thangs. They actually have an add-on for Blender as well. And I got in contact with them because I really thought that they worked so well with Outline to SVG because they have this free add-on called Thangs Model Search. If you don't know what Thangs is, Thangs is basically, think of it as 
Google, but for 3D objects. It's crazy. So I'm just going to put in 3D Benchy. This is going to go and search their basically entire archive of all the 3D models that they have. There it is, 3D Benchy. If you don't know it, it's a little benchmark that is used for 3D printing. I want to import that in. So I'm going to click import model. It's opened up a window over on my other screen showing me the licensing. And here we have this in. Now I can use this for outline to SVG. Let's say I want to turn this into some sort of key ring. In fact, that's exactly what I want to do. So I'm going to first grab this. I'll press R and then I'll press X to rotate it on the X. I'm going to go 90 degrees in the other direction and hit enter. I'm going to press seven to take a look up from the top. And we need to put some text in here if we're going to be doing an engraving. So I'm going to shift right click to move the 3D cursor over here. I'm going to press shift then A go over to text. And here's the text. I'm going to press S, scale this up. I'll press control A and apply that scale because you should always have scale here set to one. I'll press the tab button to go into editing. And now I'll just type in 3D Benchy. Brilliant. I'm now just going to press S and scale that down. By the way, I just pressed tab to get back out of edit mode. And I'm just going to place this where I want it. So right about there, that is looking good. Now, there is one thing. If I move back out around, let me press G, then Z, and I'll pull that up so that it's above the benchy. And if I'm wanting this to be a key ring, this hole is going to need to be a little bigger. So I'm just going to right click, shift right click over there, my 3D cursor. I'm going to quickly bring in a cylinder. Let me change this here to be two millimeters. Let's also change the depth so that it's something nice and big like that. From here, I'm going to move this to there. And now if you don't have the add-on, it's called Bool Tool that's letting me do this. Again, just go to Edit Preferences, Search Bool Tool and turn it on. I'm selecting the cylinder, selecting the ship, and then I'm pressing Control numpad minus to cut away. You can also do that by a button here on edit. You'll have bool tool difference, and then that's how that's done. But this is now ready to go. I want to now get this exported and ready for laser cutting. Now, this is how it's done. We're wanting the benchy, especially the E and the D, we want those holes to be part of the benchy. If not, it's not going to engrave properly. How do we exclude that? We're going to go over here. I'm going to go unique colors. We're going to go for holes as group. And the exception here, well, what is it that we're wanting to accept? Be part of that exception, it is the text. And the text, if you look up here, it is the name text. So I'm just going to put in text. There we have it. And now with that text there, if you're wanting, by the way, to put an exception to more than one thing, put a comma, add the next name and the next name and so forth. I'm going to also call this Benchy and put this on my desktop. And then we're going to open this up over in Illustrator. And of course, make sure you select everything correctly. You do not want to select this Boolean. So only select those two. We'll go up from the top and then we're going to click export SVG. And the end result should be this here. We have the internal holes separate. We have the text all as one group. And this is now ready to just go and straight away send to a laser cutter so that you can say, hey, the Benchy, give that as an engraving, give this here as a cut, and then give this as our final cut. So I really suggest you go and check out that Thangs add-on truly. You can go put in anything you want here. Let's put in monster and you're just going to see you can use this for graphic design. Honestly, you can just put in anything at all that you're looking for and then straight away just be like, oh, I really like the outline of this strange fish thing here. Just import it in, turn it into an SVG and then you can use it for graphic design. I cannot wait to see what you're going to get making with this. And that's the update to outline to SVG. It truly has changed the way that I do laser cut designing completely that I do not use any vector editing program at all. By the way, if you're looking to get a hold of these coasters and all of the earrings as well, there is an entire free pack down in the description. Feel free to get it there. You can do whatever it is that you want with it. Just be aware it's not going to have that proceduralistic coolness that you get with Shape Muse. It's just the mesh. So you can go and play around with it with Outline to SVG so you can see how exactly it works. 
A big thank you to my patrons as well. Truly, without you guys, I would not be able to create Maker Tales, and it's thanks to you guys that I was even able to make Outline to SVG right, right at the beginning when I started Maker Tales. Truly, it means the world to me. And if you're enjoying what I'm making here and you think I'm worthy of your support, I would love to see you there too. I cannot wait to see what you're all going to make. Thank you for watching, keep making, and let the quest continue.